So someone asked me, GCN Team Sky Training Camp, what are my thoughts? Come on, man. What do you think I'm going to say? I think they were trolling. They got that Sky Rider. He looked a little bit pudgy. Today was just low carb. Uh, get some low cadence work in, some torque work. And no, I'm not having a go. I'm not having a go. I'm just saying that I'm not a pro rider. I've never been a professional rider. Yeah, I raced in Belgium, etc. But I was more pack filler than like pro, pro, pro. So... I'm not coming from like, uh, I'm coming from an unfit background, but I'm leaner than Team Sky Riders. We've got Garen Thomas and Chris Froome with the leanest that I've ridden with, but I'm still lighter than them, all right? And I have a lower body mass index, and I, I am not even training fuck all. Follow me on Strava. Follow me on Strava. So in my critique of this video, I'm not having a go. I'm just sharing my comments and criticisms, all right? So don't take it personally if your name gets mentioned in this video or, or whatever, but I just find it. In 2016, we would have a team such as Team Sky. I'm not sure if the riders are trolling. I'm not sure if it's Alex, what's his name? Alex Peters or someone. I'm not sure if they're trolling. We say, oh, we'll do it low cadence, say low carb. And dude's got a puffy face. And I'm thinking, maybe that's why you look puffy. And you'd be a professional cyclist, in my opinion. I'm not having a go. I'm just saying, you should not have ever, ever a weight problem if you're a pro cyclist. Because you're training so fucking much. Like, I can't train that much because I would be, I would get so fucking lean I even said again Thomas the lightest I got down was like 59 kilos and he's just like look at me like you know he was like he's like Whoa. you know because he was saying like you know it's really hard to keep your weight light I find it incredibly easy but I don't eat the same because my nutritionist is me it's not Nigel Mitchell it's not Rob Ellingsworth etc both of those guys I'm sure they're lovely guys I've never met them but they're overweight and if you're given coaching and nutrition advice and you're overweight and your sport is about watts per kilo, I don't think that all your advice is gonna be legit because you can't even control your own weight. And I think that's a risk because these guys are sincere but sincerely wrong. There's nutritionists, etc. out there. Now, there's not just Team Sky. I see it's all hit in boxing. I see it a lot in the UFC. You've got these fat fucking coaches. Now, I say that in a, an affectionate way. Fat fucking coaches. And they're telling their, their, their athletes how to cut weight. It's like, man, that obviously didn't fucking work for you because you're fucking fat. Well, 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 oh, I'm not an athlete. No, no, no. You sh this shouldn't, athlete or not, man, you should be lean, slim, when you're that age. All right? Especially if you're like over 40, you should be lean as fuck because you've been doing some good shit long term. If you've been doing bad shit long term, it's going to show on you. So we've got the, 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 the chef. The sky chef is overweight. I'm not going to fucking eat food as a pro athlete from a chef who's overweight. Unless that chef is making food that I prescribed them to make. And the chef is going, oh, we're doing low carb. And then serves up like five trays of potatoes and rice. Like, someone needs to educate the chef that potatoes and fucking rice aren't low carb. I've done oh, probably a thousand kilometers sitting on the back of Team Sky when they come to Adelaide. Just observing. I've only seen one rider from Team Sky grinding. And that was only for a little bit. And that was I mean, Chris Sutton, he's, and he's always got into knee issues. Everyone else I saw, the good, the hitters, Richie, Port, Garen Thomas, uh, Chris Froome, all of, like Ian, all those guys, just fucking spinning, big cadence, big cadence. Low carb, low cadence. I'm not sure it's serious, but I know what's, no, what's going to happen. You're going to get some viewers who don't understand and never trained with pros or been behind the scenes. And they go, oh, yeah. I'm going to go out tomorrow, I'm going to ride at 30 RPM everywhere, and I'm going to fucking eat nothing but fucking coconut oil and bacon. And I'm like, kids are going to try this, man. This is why I make these videos. This is why I wear crazy shit. Because kids, teenagers, younger lads, that's my target audience, because they're the future. The old cunts like me or older than me, most of us are too stuck in their way. I'm not going to take advice from dude where fucking, he's got half his fucking face shaved. Fair enough. But teenagers, they're more open. They've got less ego. They're more open to change. The, the riders of the new generation, even like Chris Froome, these fuckers are open to change. Chris Froome sprouts shit in his fucking shoes or whatever. Like little sprout bags. Sprouting lentils and shit. Cadence. Tim Carrison. Cadence. Tim Carrison's come to cycling with fucking no real experience, but he's just observed it from the outside and goes, hmm. And Tim Carrison, he's a fucking guru but he's just come new to it. He hasn't, hasn't have, he doesn't have the ego to unlearn things. All these old school Euros or Americans are like, yeah, this is how we do it, you know. But Tim Carrison, spinning, in the saddle, spinning, you know. So that's changing shit up. And the old school coaches like low carb, like 
Dr. Atkins is the low carb guru. Dr. McDougall is the high carb guru. Who's slim? Dr. McDougall's slim. Who's fat? Actually, Dr. Atkins is dead. He's obese. He had a heart attack, fell over, hit his head. Rest in peace, Dr. Fatkins. You killed a lot of motherfuckers with your heart disease. It's your karma. You deserve to die. Early. Earlier. So when people say low carb, low cadence, I'm just like not sure if serious. But that's my tip, man. I'm as lean as a GC rider. I train fuck all. I've done maybe 50Ks this week. All right? So if it's working for me and my mother is clinically obese and my oldest brother is like 30 kilos heavier than me and it ain't muscle, then something's working. There's something in the high carb thing. There's something in not having whey protein if you're a cyclist looking to lose weight. Yeah, if you're anorexic, then smashing the protein powders to gain weight because that's what fucking rugby players do. But telling your athletes to eat like rugby players, oh, get your protein, boys, get your protein, lads, get your protein, lads. We're talking like we're cyclists here. Cyclists want to be as frail as a fucking female ballerina. They don't want more protein, man. They want more carbohydrate. They want to eat like motherfucking Kenyans. Lean, corn, rice, sugar, bananas, ugali. Teff, rice, things like that. Low protein, low fat. I almost said low carb. Low carb is exactly what you want to eat if you want to burn off Muscle, even fucking Nigel Mitchell, uh, Mitchellton Mitchell said that. Nigel Mitchell said, and that's, and that's a documentary BBC, when you're running out of carbs, you're burning your, your gluconeogenesis, you're burning your muscle off. Now, I don't know, maybe, maybe these guys are trying to do low carb to burn muscle off. If that's okay, that's, that's fine, I'm cool with that. But let's be clear to the audience that's what they're doing, not versus saying, oh, we're doing low carb to lose weight, because you don't lose weight, you lose muscle. Otherwise, all those low carb fuckers, you go to, you go to any low carb convention that's full of fat fucks. You come to our festival, it's full of lean motherfuckers, and you got a few overweight people, but you come back in two or three years, they're lean again. I've seen the most radical motherfucking transformations in terms of weight loss and the athletic performance, totally natty, from high carb, raw to four vegan style, smashing the fruit, rice, sugar, carbs, corn, bananas. There's no, there's no fucking doubt about it, man. This shit increases your nitric oxide levels in your blood. It, ha- it helps your endothelium health. Increases oxygen transport, transport, uptake and delivery around the body. Cycling is all about oxygen. If you don't have enough oxygen, you're fucked. doesn't matter what, what's going on, what you're on, what you've done, who you are. If you don't have enough oxygen to your legs, you are going zub-zub. You're going nowhere. So this lifestyle helps increase oxygen percent in the blood. Eating more fat low, it gets your blood blood cells sticky together. Look it up. Look it up, guys, everyone out there. Red fat increases red blood cell aggregation, congregation, coagulation. It just makes them stick together. That's why your legs feel blocked when you have a lot of fat. So pour more olive oil on your food. Next day I go out and train, your legs feel blocked. They feel blocked because your red blood cells are clumping together. Not good for clots or th- thrombosis. And that's what, that's one thing that's worked. And also muscle glycogen. When you run out of glycogen, you run out of performance. So these people out there, especially the internet warriors, you guys don't have to agree with me. You don't have to agree with me, but you're still fucking wrong. Any nutritionists out there disagree with me, you don't have to agree with me, but you're still wrong. Any of these fat coaches out there, the fat UFC or boxing coaches, oh, you know, the cars are bad. You fat fucks, you don't have to agree with me, but you're still wrong. And you're compromising the performance of your athletes. You're making your athletes, you don't really care about your athletes, you're just sort of like, oh, look at me, you, know, this is- you just fucking browse the internet, see what fads going on, go, oh, bacon's good for you, I like eating bacon, yeah, my athletes eat more bacon. You're justifying complacency to your athlete, and you're justifying complacency on the net, etc. High carb for the win. Again, you don't have to agree with me, but you're still fucking wrong.